Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. You have been a busy man. Uh, we're going to talk about the recent flood event we had here in Houston. And uh, as as always, you were front and center uh, juggling a lot of things. And so uh, let's just jump right in. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, I guess, st start maybe where, when the event started, which was... What Sunday night, Monday? Yeah, Sunday night, the twenty of April, twenty uh, eighth, I think it was. <clears throat> and uh, you know, we we were certainly expecting heavy rain, <clears throat> but if you remember back the weekend before that, we were expecting heavy rain too. Yes, and it didn't quite pan out that weekend. And so I think <clears throat> from a forecasting standpoint, we might have pulled back a little bit um going into this because we sort of got burned on that weekend before when it didn't pan out and so we probably downplayed it a little bit although you know i think people i think a lot of people kind of um dismiss those isolated higher totals we talk about so you know we'll say okay we're expecting three to five inches of rain widespread with isolated amounts of eight to ten inches and you know i think a lot of people will i'm not going to get the eight to ten inches uh, and then and, they, and they're and then, probably right. And then they I get mean, it. I mean, most people don't get the eight to right. ten inches. But yeah, anyway, so unless you're Mount Bellevue or you know, and you got the three hours for you. Yes. Oh, um gosh. and so you know, I, I I kind of realized we were probably heading down a bad road Sunday evening. It was about 10 or 11 o'clock when we had those big training supercells that were also producing severe weather. Um, a couple tornadoes up there. The one in, I think it was Trinity County or Polk County. Um, and then the one over in um, Gr Mad uh, west of Madisonville, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And so you get these big, huge supercells that are producing four or five inches of rain an hour and severe weather. And, and that's, I think that's when I kind of realized this was probably going in the direction we thought we were going to have the weekend before. Yeah. And so, you know, you're starting to get these big rainfall rates. I think it was around 1130 or midnight on that Sunday evening. Um, we had one gauge up around Trinity Lake Livingston that had uh, 10 inches of rain in two or three hours. And so <clears throat> that just kind of gives you the idea what the atmosphere is capable of. So anyways, that comes down <clears throat> into Monday morning, kind of skirts around the metro, right? We don't get a whole lot in the metro area. And then we get a break on Tuesday and, and most of Wednesday. And then, and then we just kind of do the whole thing over again on Wednesday. And again, you know, the forecasts were always for widespread three to five inches north of by 10 and isolated, you know, eight plus amounts. And, and we certainly saw that again on Wednesday. The unfortunate part is it kind of developed in the same exact area, same exact locations from about Lake Conroe to Lake Livingston that got hit on Sunday night, Monday morning. And so this was kind of a two prong, two event type attack. Um, and those storm totals really got up there. You know, you're talking seven day totals of 15 to 25 inches of rain from Lake Conroe to Lake Livingston. And um, I can certainly tell you if there was anybody who thought it was going to rain 15 to 25 inches, uh, uh, two Sunday mornings ago, we used to talk to him because <laughs> no one really. I mean, hire them in the weather department. We, we we certainly thought we could get heavy rain, but not, you know, twenty plus inches of rain. Right. And of course, anytime you're going to get that kind of water, you're going to have the river. You're going to have flooding. And um, you know, we we've had just absolutely horrible, and it does it hasn't got a lot of coverage. But just disastrous flooding on the Trinity, um, the highest pool level and the biggest releases ever on Lake Livingston, surpassing heart. I mean, this is this has gone past Harvey, and I, I and I kind of caveat that a little bit by that area up there to the north of Lake Livingston, over towards north of Huntsville, didn't get as much rain in Harvey as we got down here toward the coast, and so surpassing Harvey to them is a lot different than surpassing Harvey to us. Mm -hmm. Like it's 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 going to be very difficult to surpass Harvey here. But in some of these other areas that that got 15 to 20, 25 inches of rain with Harvey, this event was on par with that in, in some cases. And it's also a function of how the rain fell. You know, in a lot of these, both Conroe and Livingston, the rain fell right directly just upstream of the lake. 
Mm-hmm. So it wasn't hundreds of miles away or it's draining in and it can attenuate and we call attenuate to kind of, kind of sit in, in the in the field along the river and stuff like that. This water going directly to the lake. There, there's just nowhere for it to go. And so you get these big rises in both Conroe and Livingston um, that occurred on, on Thursday morning. <laughs> following that heavy rainfall and of course the water that comes down um the other watersheds the east fork of the San Jacinto River and and, you know just to clarify some of the rumors sir because (laughs) thank you sir there's no there's There's rumors no lack of rampant rumors (laughs) in a in a good disaster yeah unfortunately Um, yeah Trinity River water Lake Lake Livingston releases in Trinity River water does not affect any way shape or form Harris County or the metro area so when Lake Livingston's releasing water that goes down the Trinity River to uh, uh, Liberty, Goodridge, Liberty, Romare, um, and then to Galveston Bay, east of us through Chambers County, so east of Harris County. So, you know, there's still horrible flooding going on in Liberty County today, and uh, we don't have any flooding going on in Harris County. So it's just it's just kind of that that point of where how water moves and falls and everything like that, um, and then releases from Lake Conroe go into the West Fork of the San Jacinto River, the East Fork of the San Jacinto River, which goes up from New Caney to Plum Grove up to Cleveland and then up towards Huntsville. A lot of people don't realize it goes that far up. Um, has no reservoir, lake flood control ability anywhere on that river. And so it's simply water in and water out on, on the East Fork of the San Jacinto River, kind of kind of like the, uh, um, you know, like a Spring Creek or a Cypress Creek or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that was, that was that. That was, that was last week. Can you, can you ever think of a time besides Harvey because the models were picking up some of this r- ridiculous rainfall for Harvey but can you ever think of a time besides Harvey where the models did pick up this kind of rainfall over, uh, over 20 inches yeah, t- they did very well in tax day okay in, in April of 2016 uh they were just off by 24 hours so we we actually thought the tax day flood was going to be the next night and it happened starting on Sunday night um, I wouldn't say they were horrible for Memorial Day 15 either. And I think we, we were a little spoiled back in 15 and 16 because the models, the signal was very good in these big events. Like, you know, even even 8 or 10 or 12 inches of rain, you're going to have issues. So when you start talking 15, 20 inches of rain, you know you're going to have flooding. And I, I don't know what the difference is. You know, maybe the 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 features in the atmosphere were slightly more pronounced. Um, of course, it was same time of year virtually, um, and and that's some of the issue. That's some of the issue we faced last week is is you have these really suitable disturbances aloft. They're not strong. Um, you you don't have any real well defined front or boundary. Um, and so you don't have something to kind of develop the storms and then push them on through. And so they kind of just fire up when you get enough lift from these little disturbances passing through. And of course you have tons of moisture mm. and, and, and they just kind of take on a life of their own. They just kind of morph into these thunderstorm complexes. They produce boundaries and they start feeding off the boundaries and then the, the inflow coming in from the Gulf. And, and once you have all that kind of going, that complicated situation going, uh, then you have a decent idea. Yeah, this is your problem area. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you know, repeatedly last week that was all north of north of I ten and really north of Highway one hundred five. Yeah, you know, Thursday morning got a little dicey down further south of Woodlands and Kingwood those areas, but the majority of this happened up north of one hundred five. If you're down Fort Bend County or Wharton County, you didn't even see a drop over. Right. Um, and I think that's just a function we were kind of sitting right on that northern edge. Of, of the higher heights over the Gulf of Mexico and, and the capping and and big thunderstorm complexes like to hug that northern edge because they feed off of all that stuff coming off the off the Gulf unimpeded and they can just go and go and go, which is exactly yeah. you know what we saw. Yeah, it's kind of a um on a mesa scale, I guess, kind of a uh, a low cut off low a little trough area over Montgomery County basically and it just got stuck there. Yeah. And then and then when it finally 
moved it moved south but fortunately it didn't didn't get stuck over houston metro because that would have been you know 12 inches or four oh, yeah. inches right here so uh, not good either not good anywhere but uh yeah so um it, it, those models do is, is so much better with synoptic systems that are moving and you know things weird things don't happen with them but this time of year when the fronts struggle to get through and stall that's when we get these weird things that uh, start happening with the weather it becomes very difficult to forecast yeah it's almost like convective thunderstorms in the summertime we know there's a 20 percent chance we just don't know exactly where and what, what time yeah yeah and i don't know when this is going to get out but you know, I, I don't think we're totally out of the woods yet. You know, the, the this pattern is very reminiscent of 15 and 16, where it just keeps reloading and we keep repeating. And, you know, going into late this weekend and next week, again, we get this large trough cutoff system out to the west, and it just sends one disturbance after another across Texas. So not only are we dealing with the flooding here in east Texas, southeast Texas, but it's the severe weather you know, that we've been having in the Southern Plains and, and parts of Central and West Texas. I and mean, last night we had all kinds of big giant hail out in the hill country. Um, and so that that that's, it's very similar to what we went through in 15 and 16, where we would get wave after wave after wave and round of showers and thunderstorms. And obviously you, you do that for a few weeks and the ground just can't take any more of it. Um, but, you know, looking at late next week, with the same pattern in place and possibly a more well-defined front moving into the area to add a focus, you know, there, there's there's potentially some concern yet again for heavy rainfall and, and severe weather. Mm -hmm. um, and so, well, there's plenty of fuel there. Yeah, this time of year, surface dew points are above 70. And, you know, the K values are, are high all the way through the atmosphere. All you need is you don't need, need much. Just a little ripple to get things going. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, uh, we will see what happens. Jeff, talk about um, your what you go through during these events, because you obviously are a very busy person. You're trying to forecast weather and you're, uh, you know, trying to communicate, get word out to the public with your social media, as well as your interviews with local TV and so forth. What Walk us through what, what a week with Jeff Lindner is like during, during this kind of time. Yeah, it's, it's kind of what I call controlled chaos. Um, you know, there, there's so many things that are going on at the same time. Um, and, you know, there's there's a forecasting element that before the rain starts that you're trying to pinpoint where and how much. And, you know, we obviously we didn't do a very good job last week on that at all. I, 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 I say that we didn't do we didn't do great on the amounts, but the location wasn't horrible. The location um, we, was we were always kind of focusing north of I-10 and that's, that, right. that's where it kind of ended up at. Yeah. Then once it hits the ground, you're 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 routing water. So you're you're moving water down down the rivers and the creeks, um, and and modeling, you know, with the river forecast center and the National Weather Service, you know, how high this stuff is gonna get. Um and you know, it sounds easy, right? Well, you put water on the ground and you say it's going here and it's gonna get this high, but it's it's not as it's not as easy um as it sounds. It's actually pretty complex. And um in, in some of these areas, especially in the East Fork. Uh, up north of Cleveland, which is out in the San Houston National Forest, there's not a lot of, of data. There's not a lot of rain gauges. There's not a lot of gauging up there. And so we're sort of blind to what's coming until it gets down to Cleveland, until it gets down to about 105. Um, and that that was kind of the thing on Tuesday evening where we had all the rain Sunday night Monday up there. And, you know, the next thing we know, we have – uh, the 59 feeder roads are flooding in Cleveland from the East Fork of the San Jacinto River. And clearly at that point, we realized, well, we got a lot of water coming. And this was before, this was before the second round uh, that came later in the weekend. You know, I was up on the East Fork earlier this week at Plum Grove and we were taking some high water marks. Uh, and it's, it's, it was, it was a big flood for the East Fork. It was devastating. Um, not only was the water really high, only about four feet lower than Harvey. Um, and you know, that's, that's saying something when you're, when you start talking anywhere in the vicinity of Harvey, you know, you're starting to obviously have some, some pretty significant flooding. Um, but the velocities, how fast that water was moving, I mean, just tore trees 
out of the ground. Um, a lot of erosion, damage to infrastructure, roadways. Um, there was one case where the 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 bank eroded and the power lines collapsed into the river. I mean, there was it was it was some damage up there. I I did not go up there after Harvey, so I can't really compare it to how it looked after Harvey. But I was I was somewhat surprised at the flow that came down the East Fork. Um, and you know, it 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 sort of reminded me a little bit of flooding in in Central Texas, not quite that dramatic and high velocity, but you know, flows strong enough to lift and move buildings and and kind of scour stuff. And that you know, you don't really see that here often, but you see it out in the hill country. Um, so you know, I don't know what was the question again. What what was that? <laughs> well. Um, I'm sure the givens are not much sleep. Uh, it's probably it's a lot of chaos. But you, as far as the uh, because you you are you know juggling a lot of uh, walls there, and you're interviewing with the media and and communicating to the public, posting on your own social media. So, uh, do you have any help? <laughs> we're doing all this i i do have help but you know you can't you, there's no way you can do this alone so yeah. I, have, I have a team of people um and 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 even the flood control district has a team of people that help with the information the passing line of information um and and um and and kind of working the event because there's a lot of avenues something like this takes so there's the there's the forecasting part, the weather part, there's the water part, and then there's everything else that goes with it. Okay, and what I mean by that is it's questions you don't know, it's questions you have no clue you're gonna you, you someone's gonna ask. Um, it's 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 um, talking to first responders, especially uh, law enforcement and fire that are having to go out and rescue people. From their homes and you know this event unlike most flood events in harris county this was a river flood and so we we actually had time we we could see it coming we knew this water was coming and so rarely do we ever do any sort of evacuations here but we had time on this to tell people look this water is coming it's not your routine river flood even if you're elevated you could get wet so you know you have time to get to get out and leave and so we were we were sort of pushing that because we were trying to prevent you know, first responders from having to then go in and and get people because when you start putting people in fast moving water with boats and power lines and debris and all this thing, just bad things can happen. And I'm not saying it's going to happen, but things can happen. And hey, if we can just get you on out of here before the water gets here, it kind of eliminates the need for all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I think a lot of people did listen. You know, a lot of people realized, hey, this isn't the river flood from January we had where I had a foot of water in my yard and everything was fine and it went down. This is, you know, 10, 12 feet of water in some cases. And I'm not going to be able to come and go as I please for several days. And so I think a lot of people did take it seriously. A lot, a lot of people did leave. Um, you know, the good news is there's not a lot of homes in, in these areas. I mean, this obviously this is a river, so it's flooded many times. And after Harvey, um, a lot of the homes are or people have moved on. Yeah. And and there's just not a lot of homes there, and so I think that helped us a lot. Um, the 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 flooding on the West Fork wasn't as bad as we quite thought, so it crested about two feet below what we were thinking on the West Fork, and that helped um, prevent um, some of the flooding in the Kingwood area. I mean, they still had flooding; some of the Lone's homes still flooded, but it wasn't. Um, widespread disaster flooding like we like we saw in, in October 94 or, or Harvey up there. So, you know, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of coordination um, on warnings and statements to the Weather Service. Um, of course, there's lots of media uh, interviews and, and, they're, and they're typically all about the same. You know, what's happening? What's your recommendations? What do you want people to do? Uh, what's the forecast looking like? That type of stuff, and and so there's a lot of that that goes on, and you know, it's a combination of Zoom, which are somewhat easier to a degree, and then like the live when they come in. Um, interestingly enough, they don't really send a lot of reporters with mics anymore. It used to be they would come with the microphones, and yeah. you know, yeah. Now they mic you up with the lapel mic, 
for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe it's something different and better. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's 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 hectic. You know, Thursday was was really hectic. Thursday was it's pouring rain. You're getting two, three, four inches an hour. So you not only are you having the street flooding going on, you're having rapid rises on some of the creeks, Willow Creek and Spring Creek. Um, you know, you got this big flood wave that's been generated overnight that's going to eventually come down the rivers. Um, everybody has questions. Everybody has, you know, timing questions and, and this and that. You have to think about your infrastructure. Are you going to overtop bridges? Are you going to hit bridges with the water? Is it going to get that high? Um, so you start you start having access issues with with things. And, of course, that was really bad to our north where they had roads that were flooded and then compromised. They washed out. Yeah. And they're, they're just out. Yeah. Just out now. Bridge is gone. Bridge is gone. And so, you know, you start thinking and worrying about that stuff because we saw back in 19 with the Melda mm -hmm. um, when when a barge broke loose and hit the I-10 bridge, how much chaos that caused. And so things like that can happen when you get all this big water coming down and it interacts with infrastructure and, and, and you know, the lower San Jacinto barges and tugs and all that kind of stuff that's down towards I-10. And then, of course, the ferry down there at, at uh, Lynchburg at the monument, San Jacinto Monument, we had to close that because the the the, the current was just too strong. Yeah. Um, so there's there's just a lot of moving parts, lots of briefings. I, I can't even tell you the number of briefings that you do in a day. It's a lot. Um, a lot of conference calls and then just... Just a lot of of questions and 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 briefings to to different various staff and elected officials and stuff like that. How, how do you get sleep? I mean, how, do you is that something like you you just lie down and say, okay, I'm, I'm I need to be up at this time. I mean, do you do it in intervals, three or four hour intervals? Do you you know how does that? How do you deal with that? Yeah, it's it's more the two or three hour intervals that that you can. There's some folks at the at the emergency operations center. They have um, couches or futons or stuff like that you can lay down on. What I the first night I don't even remember. I guess Thursday night. No, it was when I don't know. Was there a Thursday night? Um, I actually felt worse after after sleeping for about two hours. I got a really bad headache, mm -hmm. and um, then I went in a good mood and. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I was popping Advil to try to get rid of the headache. Um, but you know, I don't know, sometimes it's just better to go until you just physically can't go anymore. And I and I know I can't I, I know I can't do I can't do Harvey today. Like that's seven, eight years ago. I'm seven, eight years older, and I there's no way I could go that long without sleep, at least without a couple of hours. But it's amazing what a few hours of sleep and a shower will do. And then you just kind of it, it just you just start going again. Yeah. And you just go and you deal with whatever is happening at the time. And of course, there's the forecast. And luckily with this, we were getting breaks. You know, we 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 kind of get these onslaughts of heavy rain, then we get breaks. And it, it'd be a little bit of weather downtime, not flooding, because the flooding's still happening and coming, but a little bit of the weather downtime. And then here comes the next round, and you're trying to, you know, how much more is is is, is this going to produce, and is it going to change the forecast that we have for the water? Mm -hmm. You know, because just because we get more rain doesn't always mean the forecast for the water is going to change, because a lot of the models incorporate future rainfall into it, yeah. and so. You know, it's when you 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 plan on two inches and you get eight. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a problem. Yeah. And that happened Friday morning again. You know, we weren't expecting a lot of rain Friday morning. And yet again, here we are with four or five more inches of rain. Mm -hmm. And so we're having to, you know, adjust these peaks, these peaks crests that, that are coming on these flood waves. Um, and again, once you start changing stuff, that that's a whole nother round of briefings and informing everybody. And at some point you just sometimes just pick up the phone. I remember Thursday morning um, talking directly with the city of Houston saying, you're going to have significant street flooding at Kingwood. Like with these rainfall rates that we're having, there's just the, the systems, the underground systems aren't going to be able to handle it. Um, and so they had already pre-positioned assets up there the night before. So that was a good decision. Um but then, yeah, it's it's a lot of that. Sleep sleep is is just one of those things that you, you just kind of get it when you can. Yeah, yeah.
Well, I, you know, you talked about uh, watermarks too a lot. People don't realize uh, they may think that you're just busy during the event, but there's work to be done after the event. Oh, my gosh, I was uh, out and about this week, uh, drove through Navasota on Tuesday. And, you know, we've been focused mainly on the San Jose River, but even up there, pastures flooded, you know, structures and pastures, uh, houses and stuff in the lower part of the pasture flooded. Um, I drove to Beaumont this week, too, and I've never seen the Trinity River out of its banks. I mean, the, the before you get to the bridge, the uh, old Lost River exit, I think it's exit 130, I mean, water all the way to there and, and further west. It's uh, So talk about the watermarks and uh, collecting that data. What what do you all do with that data? Yeah, so we took high watermarks on Monday and Tuesday. Um, we did all the Tangent Basin, Loose Bayou, and Cedar Bayou. Um, and really, it's, it's kind of twofold. A, we can use the high watermarks to firm up our inundation mapping. So we'll produce a, a final... This is what flooded from from the river, from the river rain. We call it river rain. So that's the creeks, the bayous, the rivers. This is what was inundated from that water. And obviously, the more data you have, the better that map's going to be. So that's that's kind of the first thing. The second thing is people will use high water marks into the future um, based on this event for, hey, if I took the same exact storm and the same exact rainfall and we know I got to X feet at this bridge. If I do this work over here, how is that going to change the peak of this storm? Okay. And so that's one thing. And then of course, it's always the historic. It's how does this compare to previous, to previous events? And so where you have gauges on bridges, you get a lot of that data, um, except, you know, um, in this case, the our Plum Grove gauge at 2090 on the East Fork was flooded. We lost it. So we did not capture the peak of the river. So getting a high water mark there is important. So we know what it got to. Um, and, and, you know, that's probably the biggest thing is people want to know, well, how does this compare to Harvey or Omelda or October 1994 or something like that? And so you can go back and, you know, on the East Fork, this was the second highest flood we've had only behind Harvey. Wow, I mean, this was a this, this was a this was a big flood on the East Fork. Yeah, on the West Fork, it was not. It was, I think, number four or five. So the West Fork has had significantly higher floods, um, and then downstream of Lake Houston on the um, main stem, I don't even think this was top five. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's you know, kind of putting it into perspective of of you know how how big and how bad, right? Yeah. How big and how bad. And, you know, we, we publish all this data then on our flood warning website where you can go and you can look at the current situation. You can go back and look at all these historic floods and, and all the data. And so obviously nowadays it's a lot easier to collect data, especially in these rivers. I mean, these bridges are massive, yeah. you know, these rivers. And so before when you had to go out there and survey with a rod and level, I mean, take you all day to survey one bridge. And then with our GPS units, we can go out there and, I mean, we hit the high water mark and done 15, 20 minutes. Um, nice. And so it's 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 great. Technology is wonderful uh, when it works. <laughs> and, uh, it doesn't always work. Um, believe me, we were on the lower San Jacinto. Ooh, I can't even remember Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday morning, and our GPS unit was telling us it was like forty eight feet. And I, I mean, we're, we're, the guy I was with, we're both looking at each other like this can't be right. Um, so we had to go to the, you know, back of the hand paper math and just do sub subtraction from this is, we know this elevation and we're going to go find the mark and we're just going to take the difference. And that's going to give us what the mark was because mm -hmm. for some reason, the GPS just, uh, it, it rebooted and then the battery died and it rebooted and it just didn't work after mm -hmm. that. What a surprise. Lesson learned. <laughs> Lesson learned for to make sure when I'm on my next storm surge survey to make sure we have a entire separate GPS unit just in case it decides to stop working. Yeah. Well, speaking of technology, uh, our viewers may or may not notice that it looks a little different. We're not wearing headphones. We're, yeah, we don't have the mics in front of us. Uh, well, I got a new PC and uh, they're not all of my equipment's not talking to each other nice. So this is an improvised <laughs> Y'all may never even hear this. <laughs> yeah, we, we hope that you'll hear it. <laughs> and the quality is uh, you know, nice enough to, to keep listening. But uh, anyway, well, uh, yeah, that's, uh, Jeff, 
thank you for all that you do. I, I know that those weeks aren't easy for you and for your team and everybody involved there. So uh, with this next round, uh, if we do get something that's, you know, uh, going to flood, hopefully it won't be in the same area at least and, and uh, kind of spread it out a little bit. But uh, yeah, we, we've got that coming up. And then, of course, an active hurricane season, which we'll be talking about in another podcast. But uh, any final thoughts on this flooding event? No, I, I think one of the things to, to always drive home around here is that we can flood any time of the year. Um, it doesn't have to be a tropical system, a name storm, anything like that. We can have flooding anytime. And it is so, so, so important to have flood insurance. Like I just, only 30% of residents of this county have flood insurance. That means 70% of you don't. Yeah. And I, 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 flooding is such a big thing here. Yes, it's been quiet the last three or four years we just haven't had a lot of flooding but you know we all know if this 20 inches of rain would have fallen more in the metro area we would have flooded a lot of things there would have been a lot of structure flooding a lot of house flooding and it's not because um there hasn't been a lot of work being done to mitigate flooding and all that there has been there has been a lot of work but when you get that volume of water it's simply going to overwhelm your projects and your mitigation efforts. I mean, you're talking massive amounts of water. Um, and, I, and I think that's somewhat lost on, on people sometimes is when we, you know, we throw 20 inches of rain around like it's nothing around here now. Um, but it's the 20 inches of rain is a massive volume of water. Um, and it all focuses into those creeks and the rivers and the bayous and stuff like that. And so, you're going to get flooding when you have that type of rainfall. And, and, and it's not just Southeast Texas and Harris County. You're going to have flooding in New Orleans. You're going to have flooding in Florida. You're going to have flooding in the Carolinas when you get this type of rain. And and there's there, there comes a point where there's only so much you can build and do. And the fact is, it's just too much rain. It's It's like putting a water hose through a straw. <laughs> It's it's just too much. It's not going to work. It doesn't fit. Right. Um, it's the same thing. And I think I think sometimes we we lose a little we lose a little sight about that. Yeah. Right. Like you said, anywhere can flood. But our challenge here in the Houston area, particularly our topography. You know, we we just uh, I think the gradient uh, from thirty miles to the bay or something is like one hundred and fifty feet or something like right. that. It's very flat. You know, mm -hmm. so. Uh, other uh, other uh, challenges for other areas, but that's certainly ours here. So, well, thanks again, Jeff. Enjoyed it as always. And we'll uh, thank uh, y'all for listening, watching. Hopefully you are. <laughs> Hopefully uh, this uh, little improvised uh, recording works. So catch you on the next one. Thanks again, folks.